Hey everybody, this is Christian Buckley doing another MVP Buzz Chat. I'm talking today with Paul. Hello. Howdy. It's great to have you. And for folks that don't know you, who are you, where are you, and what do you do? Um, yeah, so my name's Paul Wynn Stanley. Uh, I'm based, as you can probably tell from my accent, out in uh, the UK, in England. Um, I, I'm originally from the north of England, uh, from a place called Barnsley, which is uh, uh, an old coal mining community uh until the 80s when that all changed uh but i live now in london i've been living here since the mid 90s hmm. um with a my wife and the kids and everything yeah been, um been here a long time um so i'm uh i'm a what, 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 what would you say i am I, I i have my own company uh which is independent just, independent yes. independent um limited company Mm -hmm. uh, called SCCM Solutions, and um, I provide services through that to whoever wants to take me on board with cool projects, basically. So uh, I do a lot of, uh, I spent a lot of time in the past working with Config Manager, mm -hmm. SCCM, uh, and a lot of stuff now is is cloud-based. So moving in towards Intune in the last sort of five years, uh and that's starting to grow into other things around windows 365 uh, a little bit of you know security now as well yep kicking in being ever so important so yeah i that's what i do a lot of the enterprise mobility mvps have become dual security mvps or switched over to security mvp yeah. entirely yeah. i know yeah. the buckets change a lot and i'm not sure entirely what that means within the enterprise mobility space yeah, no, that, I didn't make that cut. <laughs> I, I saw that the other day and there was a few people just kind of suddenly pinging on and uh, saying, no, I'm, I'm security now. And it's an interesting thing to see. And it is blurring. It is blurring quite a lot. I mean, I'm doing a lot of work at the minute around conditional access, for example. So, you know, that that bolts in in, in quite a big way. Uh, and I've spent the last few weeks really digging deep on that. Started doing a blog series on it based on, on that learning experience, you know, and, are, and sort of are, by chance, are you playing with the the new shared channels and teams with conditional uh, access? And some no, things? no, not yet. So what I'm doing at the moment is is playing with the, the templates that Microsoft give you and exploring those. So yeah, no, I haven't haven't dipped into that one yet. Yeah, I'm sure it, it'll come up as you explore more, but more, but that's a yeah one of the you know kind of uh, governance. I don't know what you call it. Uh, you know, stops, you know, a way of yeah. stopping the movement towards the sh shared channels. But yeah. Anyway. Yeah, no, I, I found it quite interesting in that um, I, I'm looking at experience. Yeah. In, in, in that particular area at the moment, what happens if you do this? And obviously you have scenarios you can, you can click in the console, create these scenarios, etc., cetera, um, and look at them, but it doesn't give you the, the feedback that you would get by actually physically clicking the buttons and, and going onto the iPad, going onto the Mac, whatever, and, and seeing that. So I'm trying to capture through this series presently, I'm working with a, a friend in the community called Mike Marable, who's based out in Michigan. And we're looking at um, what ifs. Yeah, like I say, so you click it, what happens on the endpoint? What happens in on the back end? What do I see? You know, looking at the signing logs, what what I expect to see is it what's being reflected there, and all these various things. I'm finding you know it's it's, it's kind of weird because it's one of those areas I would have gone before and dismissed it and gone oh yeah yeah you know, uh, and now I'm looking at it and going hmm, okay this is interesting. So um, yeah, where security uh, you know before as I say you wouldn't have taken it on board as much now definitely so uh, a lot more hands on in that area really. Well, it's interesting. So before I got in the Microsoft ecosystem back in 2005, and I worked in the IBM world, I worked with rational software, and I worked with and did consulting around software configuration management. And so you know, the for folks that don't know what that, you know, SCM, like that world, it's, you know, it, it all got kind of morphed into the DevOps world, the broader DevOps space. Um, but it, it's, it's just interesting again, like the, like the MVP buckets, the, you know, the areas of focus kind of change and evolve mm -hmm. where you could have people that are working on the same team and seemingly 
very similar areas. And then one is going to security and one is remaining yeah. in enterprise mobility. Yeah, I mean, I'm finding that, you know, the, the programs themselves as well are becoming more blurred as well, you know, with the, the cross pollination of things. So, yeah. you know, where, uh, again, I'm doing a blog series with Niall Brady around uh, Windows 365. And, um, you know, a lot of the conversations are all happening where before we would have a config manager conversation and we were mm-hmm. very isolated there doing that thing yeah uh, now we've got okay win 365 bolted in we've got uh M- mde bolted in all this kind of stuff so it's it but there's a lot to take in yeah well, but it used to be i don't know if it still is or not it used to be that i mean you earn your like i was a sharepoint mvp and so uh, there was i was because i was doing focus so much just on the sharepoint space and then it got you know went to you know the office servers and services and uh and then office apps and services and now microsoft 365 apps and services but there were you know people that would come in the unified comms that were like teams mvps there were yammer mvps there were powerpoint and word and excel mvps and now all of those things are in that one bucket and so i think microsoft is also streamlined and part of it i suspect is just a personnel of management of the mvps for that yeah yeah yeah, but, yeah, yeah, a lot, a lot of changes uh, happening as well. I think behind the scenes currently. Well, but the other side is that you often you don't come in and talk about the single product because, like, mm. like we talk a lot about. I talk a lot about Azure and the different Azure touches on different things. I'm not mm. an Azure MVP. I'm nowhere close to becoming a dual MVP. But somebody to become an MVP needs to be much more focused than I think. Now, once you're an MVP, we can almost kind of broaden out into talk about, write about, speak about. Mm. multiple products yeah i think so uh, and and you know uh, i'm seeing that i mean definitely seeing that in myself uh as well in the things i do with customers okay i mean there's a lot of um pressure at times as well being an mvp being asked uh everything across the yeah. board okay? but but coming in at a, cer- a certain angle like i say config manager back in the day as we branch out more today um you've got to keep up with it you've got you've got to know it um but you get asked and you're expected to be an expert in it as well um it's 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 challenging you've got a lot of work to do you've got then the the community side to do and then the learning side you know you take on a lot of things and um it's fast paced um currently isn't it it's it's really it's interesting it's interesting times but very very hard to keep up with it all I hear that question a lot is like, how do you keep up? And I, my, my answer is that it's like, you you do your best, but I rely a lot on fellow MVPs and, uh, you know, so certain people that I follow that I trust, I know their voice and what they cover. And so I'm able to kind of take my eyes off certain areas and go focus on other things and then go and get their, their summary of things. What was your path to becoming an MVP? Yeah. Well, Good question. Um, so I started a blog. It's 10 years in May, mm. I think 2013, I started my blog. Uh, and I created sccmmentor.com. Now, it's only got one M. And I say this every time. It's not SCC Mentor. It's a Brangelina combination mm-hmm. of words. Yeah. Um, and really only started it up as a, a, a self-help knowledge base yeah it wasn't to it wasn't going out there to promote me in any way or shape yeah Mm -hmm. really just kind of here's a problem um i i do lots of documentation but i wasn't really keeping notes at the time uh now i I live with you know through one note yeah 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 but at the time i had nothing so i just went okay i'm just going to create a a website and i'd been working with a consultant uh, a chap called Dave Lee, who was uh, who's an exchange consultant, who'd been working on a project with me, and he'd done a few bits, and I thought, oh, this is pretty cool. Uh, I might do that kind of thing. So that's how it all kicked off originally, hmm. just by doing that. And then, um, you know, you look at the stats, and people are actually coming from all over the world and looking at this thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and I thought, well, you know, I freelance um this is a good way to help promote me as a 
as a contractor yeah yeah and and that and then that kept spinning and and i contacted um a user group in england called wmug uh windows management user group uh ran by a chap called rob marshall and said um do you what is there any way i can share out some of these blogs through the through the site mm -hmm. and he was like yeah we kind of do but we kind of can't plug that in would you be willing to write some blogs on the site uh oh we we meet up would you ma would, you know we have a little video meet up because we're based all over the uk and then we have physical meetups do you want to come and present yep I was like, um, uh, okay, because <laughs> I'm not I'm presenting still. I'm still not great with it. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, but sort of that it just kept snowballing from there, really, and just contributing more, reviewing videos, reviewing books, that kind of thing. And it just, yeah. just from there. And it was I think it was about three years into three. Yeah, about three years into doing the blogging and that kind of thing that I got nominated. Um didn't get on got rejected mm -hmm. uh and then left it and then tr the next year i just thought you know what i'm going to give it another go and really went for it and then all of a sudden i got quite a few nominations coming in and it just kind of happened so yeah, yeah i've been on board for six years now but yeah. it really didn't it wasn't a, a, an agenda a goal for me at the time uh but then like i said at that point when i decided it was like yeah i'm, I'm doing it now <laughs> i've got to that's, gotta get on board that's always the question of like uh you know how how much can you or should you push like make it that goal to become an mvp yeah. and yeah. i think that the the guidance that i share and and um is i mentor a number of people that are interested in becoming mvps yeah. but it has much more about like you're doing the stuff because you enjoyed it because it was helping you with your work and building yeah. your network and do all those things were you know independent you were going to do those things regardless of having yeah. the MVP status. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. And um, you know, and, and not everyone makes the cut. Right. Um, you know, it's so a bit of a black box black box. I mean, there's some people that I like got just uh, the announcements just went out yesterday. Is yeah. that right? Yesterday? Yeah, yeah yesterday. Right. Yep. Yep. Lose sight of what day it is with time. I'm in a basement, so you even know what time of day it is and stuff. Um, but you know, with the announcements that came out, and there was somebody, and I I said the words was it's like it's about freaking time. It's like it's one of those yep. people like I don't know how she wasn't an MVP years ago mm -hmm. for the stuff that she's been doing. Yeah. And, yeah. and so it's, it's great to go and see. But again, it's a black box. It's 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 an award that Microsoft gives and they decide. And there's a number of different factors. And we have no Perfect. idea what those. It's not like there's a checklist that I can. Hey, I've done all the things. Hand yeah. me my MVP. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> yeah, I demand it. Yeah. I mean, there's you know there's certain people I see out there who I go, you you should be on the program. And there's a there's a couple of people in particular I see constantly just not getting added on there. Yeah. Uh, and and it, and it baffles me really. But then you go, okay, like you said, there's a certain criteria. Are they meeting that? Yeah. Um, so so you, you you know when it happens, it's like oh my god, you know amazing really and then yeah. then just getting renewed every year you kind of privilege that that happens really you put in the work in but you kind of go oh i made it for another year yeah. <laughs> breathe again um yeah and i i was lucky that um you know i was on board pre-covid so i managed to go to a couple of summits uh, and experience that yep um who knows what's happening with that going forward, uh, I, I really feel for the people who are on board at present who haven't experienced that. Yet. Yeah, that's the best. That is the best part of the best part of the award is that yeah. chance to network with the product team there in <laughs> Seattle to to meet all the other MVPs. I mean, there's nothing like it. It's an incredibly powerful networking opportunity and benefit to the program. So I hope they bring that back as well. Yeah, and drink beer. Yeah. <laughs> it's i mean just i mean you can't replace no matter no amount of virtual can replace no. the power of in person it, it's like, really hard i mean i know when we're there i i really struggle with the jet lag when i'm over there and it, yeah. you know it's um caffeinate up come on <laughs> yeah so well I, yeah. I i i drink lots of coffee i get no impact off caffeine at all i'm just yeah. falling asleep while drinking it but yeah it's one of those things that but you, you know you're in the room, you're there, you're present. Um, and when it's the virtual life is happening behind you, yeah. 
uh you know the kids are around you need to get involved in the meal yeah for the night time all this kind of stuff is happening and you can't focus in the same way yeah uh, and the experience as you say it's not the same yeah it's uh, it it's not it's uh the content is different i mean what what's happened with i'm uh, sorry this uh, for everybody watch this is uh, like soapboxes like i realized that microsoft is they're changing things up and uh, uh, around there but what happens is the content gets condensed because nobody wants to sit there for an hour and just all the online. So there's yeah. less content so that it becomes more marketing content rather than any deep dive. So there's not really any true technical content. There's not the truly the ability to, to, to do the back and forth and ask questions and to hear mm -hmm. and see the faces and who's asking those and then go follow up with those people who are like, Hey, I had the same issue, but I didn't ask the question, but what are you doing around this? And I mean, there's other sidebar conversations. Yeah. That's the, the biggest loss from doing the, the, the online events. Totally. But it's uh, but I realize things are changing, but like if you look at your events over the course of the year, you need to balance that between digital and in person. Yeah, yeah, it needs to be a mix. Yeah, I mean the um, the MMS uh stream came back. Uh, I think last year was the first one. Hmm. I think no, they may they may have done a um, they do a fall autumn fall um event which kind of was the first and then they did the 2022 i was i was down for 2020 to be presenting there mm -hmm. um i haven't submitted for this year unfortunately so i'm not going to be there this time and i've never been to one and that's kind of like the big the big thing yeah, yeah. for for us to kind of uh get involved and and meet people and i think that's you know if the if the summits don't happen i need to i need to do that next year yeah. yeah um and, and events are slowly trickling back in uh the uk ha haven't been to any since but hopefully they're gonna that's gonna change and gonna yeah. turn around but they're uh, starting to pop up i, I mean look I, I realize that there is uh in the uh, cover <clears throat> in the collaboration the m365 space we have the communitydays.org site and there's a lot of other events you might go take a look at that if you're not familiar with that Mm -hmm. um, but it's Microsoft centric events around the world. And so you have an active calendar. There's like a, you know, a dozen in the next 30 days that are happening at different places around the world. Um, and so it's just a great way to look at the variety of different, some free, some paid, um, you know, uh, events that are happening. It's mostly free events that are on these or very, very inexpensive. Um, but uh, you know, again, so there's more that you can go and, submit to and participate in and i say there's some big ones like i'm i'm at there's an m365 you know conference happening in las vegas in may i didn't submit not planning on it but i'm uh, attending it yeah um, be there with with uh with my company that i'm partnering with and um it's going to be great just to see people and do the networking yeah. aspect of yeah. it yeah you know? I mean, that's the thing with the summit, you know, I mean, just meeting the people on the team, meeting other MVPs, you know, um, recognizing a face you may have seen who's been blogging and just going up and chatting to them, socializing with the product team, all that kind of thing. Really, yeah. You know, those days are coming back slowly, but yeah. sure. Yep. Yeah. Well, Paul, maybe the last question for you is like for, for, because I'm sure you've heard in, in six and a half years that you've, uh, been because they, re they renew at uh, in in like june july time frame uh yeah. every year but um people probably ask you like you know what what should i do like what's the, what's the process what do you what do you tell people how do you recommend that they should get plugged in to get on that mvp path uh yeah just get involved really um you know um i use twitter a lot uh, as a way to start to get to know people yeah um obviously kickstart with some blogging get some content out there do that but start to involve yourself in, with some conversation uh on twitter um or social media i mean there's you know there's so many channels aren't there yeah. to get involved in i mean i i don't use facebook anymore i use i, I use it to promote the blog but i I stop, I slow down, but then you go and there's, there is a Microsoft 365 community with over 60,000 members on it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's some, it just depends. You go, go, I wouldn't write it off entirely, <laughs> but 
I, I, I had a backlash with Facebook, you see, at one point. I was like, no, I don't want to see all yeah. these things, and off, off I go. Yeah. So I do promote my blog. I'm in some of the groups there as well, but I, I don't get involved. I, I, I spend too much time on Twitter, really. Uh, yeah. But, you know, it's really getting involved. Get to know the people a little bit. You know, who are these kind of gurus, experts, et cetera, and, and learn things. I, I, I did a lot of my learning with TechNet forums. Yeah, and yep. um, I just ploughed in time. Uh, I spoke to Jason Sanders around about this actually. Um, one of the one of the the ex MVPs for Config Manager now works for Microsoft, mm-hmm. and saying you know because he was getting huge amounts of points on that thing, uh, and saying how do you find time to do this and how do you know all these answers you know and he was like I I don't know all the answers I'm learning through it yeah so I was okay it's not just me then yeah yeah. Um, you know, the question would be asked and you'd go off and research it and come back yeah. with an answer for someone. You'd learn from that. Yeah. So, you know, to, to participate in that way, mm-hmm. uh, try and get involved in, in a user group if you can in some way. Um, that was I found that really beneficial, finding like minded people who, you know, were good, good friends. And just, you know, we had a laugh as well as yeah. stressing ourselves out when the events were like oh my god there's 150 people just turned up and yeah the av stuff's not working you know and all that kind of fun and shenanigans well, and if you don't find a group but there's nothing near you like start one you know it's yeah, yeah, I, yeah. i've done that internally where there's four of us sitting during lunch yeah. you know once yeah. a month and uh, with the topic and kind of take turns kind of sharing your yeah. pieces and i think you had uh, a good friend of mine ben whitmore on a previous yep. show and ben his first ever user group um up in east anglia in in the uk um i presented at it and he came down met i've met him and he said you know i said oh, i'll come present i'd love to yeah yep. traveled up there and there was about eight or nine of us in the room um, I was killing the, uh, the screen behind me. I, I, you know, presentation skills were terrible. Turning mm-hmm. turning TVs off rather than clicking slides, and everyone's just kind of like, oh, God. Uh, but you know, he started it up, and that was his passion. And yeah, you know, in 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 an area that was difficult to, you know, transportation wise to get to. Yeah. But people people had to make that leap across the it. Effort, and, right? Yeah. yeah. But you know, it was it's he did it, and then off he went and you know he's he's out there and he's an mvp yeah yeah so he kept at it well i think that's another uh, you guys if you talk about you know look for benefits look at the bright side of the pandemic uh yeah. is that there are more virtual opportunities than ever yeah. before so a lot of user groups that were in person uh you know have moved a lot of them purely um online which yeah. opens up more opportunities to go and get involved and to present and share some of your experiences. Yeah, absolutely. And if, you know, if you have, you know, and as I say, I find it daunting still to present. Um, yeah. But the first time I did it, oh my God, you know, uh, but the virtual event can help because the, you haven't got 30, 40 people staring at you, you know, right. uh, you can just focus in on what you're doing and, uh, you know, present. Uh yeah, I, I think that helps in a way. Uh, and, and as you say, there's there's opportunities to go and do those presentations anywhere in the world. Yeah. You know, I've, I've done a couple at two, uh, one or two in the morning out, out in the States. So yep. go for it. Yep. It's really it really is just getting involved. And if, if it's a passion, you'll do it. Yep. Yeah. It, that That's the thing. Find your passion and pursue yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Paul, really appreciate your time today. And uh Hey, I hope to see you at one of these uh, these MVP summits if they ha- start happening right. again. So that'd be fantastic. Yeah. Really enjoyed it. Thanks, Chris.